Hey guys, CB Super. Really quickly, I just want to show my workflow for fixing older macros. So a lot of my macros were made prior to being able to use them on the edit page, but I would like to update each one of them in order to use them on the edit page more efficiently. I'm just gonna show you my process of going in and fixing them real quick. All right, so the one that I'm gonna do right now is fog. So I'm just going to shift space, type in CB fog, and we'll see what happens here is I only have the fog on the output and I don't have the actual biker footage here. So in order to fix that, what I would normally have to do is come over here, take the CB fog, merge it on top of my media, and then it would work. Now I have a foggy environment here. So in order to do this, I would probably normally have to go and just completely redo the macro. I'm not gonna do that obviously. So I'm gonna show you a much faster way to do this. So I wanna find this macro and to find this macro, I'm actually gonna come over here to LUTs. I find that the LUTs folder is a little easier because it's already mapped and I don't have to map out the macro folder. So all I have to do is come up here to the three little dots, left click and show folder. Now. Of course, it's on the LUTs folder. It's not where I want to be. I'm going to go back one over to the Fusion folder and then come down here to Macros. We can find our fog right here with the rest of our macros. I'm just going to double click on it and I'm going to open it up inside of my notepad. So you could also do this from whatever your text editor is and you may have to map how to open that up, but it should be fairly straightforward. Right here where it says CB fog equals macro operator, I'm just going to select this, all of the macro, and I'm just going to type in the word group. I don't want to press enter. I don't want to press anything. I want these two to touch each other. I want group operator. And now I can just come over here to file. I can save it and I can go ahead and X out of this. And I don't even have to close this. I can go ahead and just jump right back over to fusion. I'm going to go ahead and delete this old fog and I'm going to bring in a new version of the fog. And we'll notice that it came in as a group. But the nice thing about this is it still has all of the actual functionality saved over here on the right. So if I double click on the group, we can go ahead and expand it and we can see what we've got going on here. I'm just gonna move this color down a little bit. I don't know why it's all the way over there. And I'm just gonna give myself a little bit more room here. Okay, so now we can see what we have here. And the problem is, is that the only input is a mask input that comes down here at the very end of my flow. That works great. Unfortunately, I don't really need a mask input as much as I need a background input. Now I can leave the mask input in there. I don't necessarily need to get rid of it, but I want a background input and I have a background here. So the easy thing would be to just delete this background. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit delete and I'm just gonna leave this exposed. I don't need to put anything into it because that is where this media is going to plug in. So let me go ahead and click on the CB fog group. Go ahead and right click, come up to macro and then back down to whichever macro you're actually adjusting. I'm adjusting CB fog, so I'm gonna go ahead and left click on that. Now you'll see that you don't have to go back and completely redo the entire macro. You just have to fix the one thing that you changed. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize all of these. I'm gonna come over here, just move this over a little bit and look that this node that I changed was called mask input. So I'm gonna come down to mask input. I'm gonna go ahead and twirl it down. And the thing that I changed actually is this background. So I exposed the background input. So I want to expose the background input here. I might even change the name of this to media input and then come down to close, go ahead and close it up. And I do want to save this. So when I save this, I've come back over to the macro folder here. And if I was to double click on CB fog now, you'll see that it changed back to a macro operator from the group operator that we already saved. One thing I can do is I can actually come over here to where it says CB fog one. I don't want it to say CB fog one. So I'm going to go ahead and manually fix that and save that out. I'm just going to get rid of this and I'm going to bring this back in. All right. And now you can see everything is fixed. Everything is updated. We now have a input and now I can put this into the fusion effects folder. Now this will actually be usable from the edit page. So that's how I'm going to fix all of my macros. Some of them may require a little bit more work on the back end to get them working inside of the effects tab. And some of my tools, I'm not even going to update because I don't feel like they should even be used from the edit page. Some of them are very specific to tracing certain things and doing certain things inside of fusion. But I hope you guys got something out of that. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.